Episcopal Church in Stafford, Texas. Our service begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom. Now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify Amen. your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verses 1 to 17, 1 to 7, pardon me, and 15 to 16. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abraham fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make my nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you through all their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our psalm this morning is take Psalm 22, taken from the Book of Common Prayer, we will read verses 22 to 30 in unison. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done.
The second reading is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 4, verses 13 to 25. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null, and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead who was handed over to death for her trespasses and was raised for her justification. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thank you, God. God. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I did not come to faith in the Lord. 
Lord Jesus Christ until my freshman year at Baylor University. As a new Christian, I was excited to learn all about Jesus and his mission to save all of humanity from the consequences of our sins, reconciling us to God. As a new Christian, I had a pie-in-the-sky perspective of what it meant to follow Jesus and how that would affect my life. Just like Peter, I had preconceived assumptions of who God is and what it meant to be a follower of Christ. In Mark, our story picks up right after Jesus asked Peter, Who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, You are the Messiah. Then Jesus began to teach the disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering, be rejected, and be killed, and after three days, rise again. This was the first of three predictions of Jesus' suffering, rejection, death, and resurrection stated in Mark. Peter took Jesus aside and rebuked Jesus for saying that he would suffer and die. Well, Jesus did not appreciate Peter's remarks and in turn rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan. You are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. To be honest, I always found Jesus' rebuke of Peter as kind of harsh. However, I realize now that Jesus was pointing out that Peter was focusing on mortal things, such as natural inclinations, feelings, and expectations of what he thought a Messiah should be instead of focusing on the divine plan of God, our role as followers of Christ, and Jesus' mission for the world. Mark was written during a time when the Jewish people were under Roman authority, which was detestable to them. They had read the prophecies of the Old Testament and were expecting a Messiah that was a warrior king like David who would come, conquer, and deliver them from the Romans. When Peter said that Jesus was the Messiah, he had those same expectations and did not picture Jesus as the suffering servant that was prophesied in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 53 verses 5 through 6 states, But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. After Jesus' rebuke of Peter, Jesus calls the crowd, along with his disciples, to him and gives a lesson on what discipleship truly is. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. So what does Jesus mean? Did Jesus mean that he expected all of his disciples to go out and be crucified with him? What I believe this scripture means today is that we are to deny our naturally selfish inclinations and try to be the imitation of Jesus in self-sacrificial service to God and community for the sake of the gospel and to share Christ's love with all that we encounter, no matter the cost or inconvenience. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. 
Paul knew that taking up his cross and following Jesus did not mean a physical death. It meant a spiritual death. A representation of this spiritual death happened to me when I was baptized at the age of 23 at Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church in Freedmanstown. The identity of conversion when we are baptized is donning a new set of clothes which signifies to the world that we give up the old ways of life and put on our new Christian identity. We have to die to the parts of ourselves that tends to fight the way of Christ and instead live by faith in the Son of God. To be crucified with Christ also signifies a complete change in the direction of our lives. It means that we confess that Jesus is the Lord of our lives, and by faith we live out our new lives to please our Lord, embraced by his love and forgiveness. Let's be honest. To follow Christ is not necessarily comfortable or popular in today's culture. Our culture shouts a me first mentality. However, discipleship requires self-denial, which reminds us that our life is not our own and belongs to God. It reminds us that we are not in control of our lives or circumstances. God is. Essentially, our life is not about us. It is about trusting God with everything by faith and going out to share his love with others. And even though our lives recently have been very difficult with the effects of a global pandemic and the latest, a devastating winter storm, our God Emmanuel is always with us. I admit that during these challenges times, I am not always clothed in the likeness of Christ or act lovingly to my neighbor. But even when I stumble while following Christ, God is with me every step of the way, ready to extend his forgiveness, mercy, and grace. Our Lord encourages us to keep trying to live a life transformed with his help. So, if following Christ is so difficult, then why should we do it? Jesus makes it clear that being selfish or concentrating on the pleasures, riches, and trappings of this world will not lead to a life with him in the kingdom of God. This world is temporary, but our souls are eternal. What good is it to lose our souls, miss sharing his love with the people around us, and miss the opportunity to bring as many people to the kingdom of God as we can. Losing our life for Jesus' sake and the sake of the gospel is the best way that we can possibly hope to live our lives. Regardless of our present circumstances, let us strive daily to follow Christ by denying ourselves and trying to be the imitation of Jesus self-sacrificial service to God and community for the sake of the gospel, sharing his love with all that we encounter, no matter the cost or inconvenience. Amen. Continuing on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer, let us profess our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten now made, of 
one with me with the Father, through them all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate on the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and upon his pile. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people of Form 3, found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. Let your name be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Let us pray for the Thayer family, for the Hall family, the Perkins family, for Carolyn, Sue, Don, Kay, Denny, Kim, DeWitt, Harriet, Randall, Cyprian, Joellen, Celeste, Joan, Mary, Alexander, Camille, Nathan, Brad, Amber, Hannah, Ken, Alan, Joe, David, Fran, Mary, Chris, Betty, Gary, Rich, Paul, Glenna, Earl. Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Turning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God. God. We confess, we confess that, that we have sinned sin against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have 
mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. This concludes our virtual service. We would ask that if you have pastoral needs, that you would contact the church office Monday through Thursday between the hours of 8 and 5.